Hey folks, today I'm going to show you how you can do something awesome in QGIS that you can't do in ArcGIS or in Arc Pro, and that is to stream huge point clouds uh, directly in QGIS, symbolize them, make DEMs out of them, uh, show them in 3D view. It's super smooth and super awesome. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, now let's get on to our tutorial. The first thing we need to do is find a point cloud that we can stream. We're going to do that um, with the USGS LiDAR Explorer. Okay, so to do this, we're gonna go to uh, the USGS LiDAR Explorer. We need a LiDAR point cloud that's either in EPT format, entwined point tiles, or COPC, which is the Cloud Optimized Point Cloud. We need one of those two formats. You can get these from the USGS LiDAR Explorer, the Freed Up LiDAR Explorer. I'm not gonna do it here because I already have one. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. What you're gonna do is you're going to create an area of interest called Control and Draw an Area. Um, you can see I'm having an index query filled network error here. What will happen is when you get it, you'll see a LiDAR processing or Explore LiDAR, LiDAR data button down here. You'll click that. You'll download the PDAL pipeline. It's going to give you a JSON file. And I've talked about this in previous videos, so you can go check those out. And it's going to look like this. You're going to have a one-line JSON file that gives you pipeline type readers.ept and this file name, which is a URL to a, a JSON file that specifies the EPT. Okay, so I am just going to copy this right here. I'm going to copy that, Control-C. Now I'm going to go to QGIS. Okay, and here I am in QGIS, and I'm going to add a point cloud. So I can go to Layer Data Source Manager. I'm going to go to Point Cloud, and I'm just going to select Protocol HTTP. I'm going to paste in my URI, which is that URL address, and I am going to click Add. And then I can close this, and you can see that my point cloud is loading. This is gonna take just a minute, and now we can see that we have that whole point cloud for quite a large area, and right now it's showing the classifications. Now, I'm gonna go in here real quick, I'm gonna do some filtering on this. We can double click here. I'm um, actually gonna right click on it. I'm gonna right click on here and do filter, and now, I can do classification equals ground. So let's just get all the ground points and we'll say okay. So this will give us that ground classification. I'm gonna come over and change my layer styling to attribute by ramp and I'm going to do it for Z values. And we're going to change these minimums and maximums because these are way off. I wonder why we can't load it there. Anyway, we're gonna change these because those are not for Z values. Um, we're gonna change this to about 1300 and about 3500, this is meters. And there you go, now you can see that we get a little more differentiation in those ground points. You can see where there's a reservoir and there's a lot of water missing. Or there's a lot of water where we're missing ground points. We can zoom in and see the elevations here. And this is going to take a minute to load, and then you'll see us get more detail as we get into this. So here it comes, loading those tiles in. I have a lot of things running, so it's being a little slower than usual, but you can see how we can just zoom in and zoom out, and this seamlessly adjusts to our resolution. Okay, now the other thing we can do is we can go to view, um, 3D map views, new 3D map view, and you can see here that now we're going to be able to look at this in 3D, and it's going to take some time to load here. Anyway, you can see how we can easily stream this point cloud. And we haven't downloaded any data. That's perhaps the greatest thing of all this. We have not downloaded any data at all. I'm gonna close this 3D map view. I'm gonna zoom out here. Um, 
Now let's go through, and we can actually make uh, a digital elevation model from this. And it's super easy to do. So what we're gonna do is go to the processing toolbox. We're gonna have, we have these point clouds here. We have point cloud conversion, data management, and extraction. Um, you can see we can convert formats, export to rasters, or I'm using triangulation or otherwise. And we have other things, assigning projections, clipping, create a COPC. We can just do all kinds of different things here. Okay, so we're gonna export to a raster. And we have our input layer, we wanna export Z. Um, we can choose a tile size. We're gonna filter this down. So I'm going to do, let's do classification equals ground so that we're getting uh, a digital terrain model or a digital elevation model of the ground and click OK. I am going to set a cropping extent and I'm going to draw it on the map canvas. I'm gonna do it for a relatively small area uh, so this doesn't take too long to run. We'll just do it for an area like that. And then I'm going to copy this so I can use it again later. And I'm going to save this to a file and I'm just gonna see it in my downloads and I'm gonna call it dtm.tiff and I'm gonna save it. Um, my resolution is gonna be one meter and I will click run. So this will take just a second here to complete. Okay, so we finished that. It took 12 minutes to complete, so a little bigger area than I wanted to do, but we can go take a look at it now. Just go ahead and close this. And we're gonna notice that we're gonna zoom in here and you're gonna see there are some holes in our model. Um, and that's just because of the method I used to interpolate. And there's these holes were probably areas where the point cloud was not dense enough for the interpolation method. And I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna show you how we can fix this. So instead of using this default export to raster, we can use the export to raster using triangulation. And so this will just create a uh, triangulated irregular network uh, that will interpolate between those points and it will give us a continuous surface. So I'm going to use the same filter expression, which is classification equals two. And I'm going to use the same cropping extent. So I'm gonna just paste that in here. And I'm going to set an output file name, which I'm gonna call DTM. Um, we'll call it TIN for 10. And we will save that. And now I'm going to click run again and you'll see the difference between these. Um, and notice here we get this band one IDW, so use inverse distance weighting and it probably had a distance threshold on it that we did not adjust or wasn't available to us to adjust. And so here we're going to do that. It's probably based on, usually it's based on the um, resolution. Let's go ahead and click run. And once again, this is probably gonna take uh, 12 minutes or more so we'll just pause this and let it go. Okay, so that completed. That one took half an hour to run. So I should have done a little smaller area. We can take a look at these results now. So now you can see our 10 DEM from the triangulation. And let me turn this one underneath it off uh, just so you can see there's no other layers turned on. You can see there are no holes there. Uh, and so the interpolation method using that triangulation approach gives us a smoother DEM without the holes when we do um, the triangulation interpolation, but it does take longer to accomplish. Okay, so that's just an example of how you can use these, uh, these streamable point cloud formats. So that, like I said, this is an EPT. You can also use COPC files, um, cloud optimized point clouds um, to do this. This is not something you can currently do with ArcGIS Pro. In fact, Arc Pro only allows you to use LAS files. So you can't even load in LAZ files, which uh, seems pretty rudimentary to me. So QGIS has a lot of cool stuff coming with this. Um, they've, they've done a lot of cool stuff with this and I expect more is coming. I wanna point out one last thing. If we click on the export for raster, I forgot to mention this. Um, it gives you a little bit of information about the algorithm here. Um, 
So it doesn't give us a whole lot. You can see that it has IDW, so we know it's inverse distance weighted, um, but just giving you a little more information on that algorithm. So I hope you found this useful. Um, stick around for the next video. I'm gonna show you how you can use these data to make a canopy height model in the next video. And so we'll go over that shortly. So thanks for watching and hope you found this useful as always.